Hi. I've recently been neglecting my PDP-8 a bit, so when I saw some memory for PDP-8 on sale on eBay, I thought, let's get that, and uh, more memory is always useful, and it gives me a good reason to uh, fire up the 8 and do a bit of work on it. So uh, what I want to do today is uh, check out the new memory I've got and uh, run the diagnostics, diagnostics and make sure it works okay. So here we are, 8K word, 12 bits per word, core store. That's uh, 8192 locations and that by 12 is over 98,000 cores. They're very small ferrite magnet magnetic cores. They're less than half a mil, 20 thou, if you're thinking in uh, Imperial. Core store was developed in the mid 50s, I understand, and rapidly replaced the existing technologies at the time for memory, notably serial uh, delay lines, normally acoustic delay lines, either using mercury or laterally nickel, nickel lines, and also uh, the Williams tube which was a CRT cathode ray tube which stored in basically capacitively. There's also drum serial memories as well. And they pretty well got replaced by core store and that lasted till the mid 70s when it was replaced. It itself was replaced by the um, semiconductors cores when the semiconductor memory when it became uh, uh, practical. Um, the technology is very interesting. Probably not enough time on this video to go into it, although if there is a bit of room at the end I might put a, a brief uh, bit about actually how it operates. Um, I think that Curious Mark's channel, he has a, a nice uh, one on uh, operation of core stores and also other people as well. There's quite a few out there on, 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 the, on the web. So now this was sold as used as opposed to... Um, for spares or repair because it came out of a piece of equipment that was, that was actually apparently operating therefore it should be fully functioning we've got to plug it in and see before we actually go to the eight i'd like to show you some of the documentation that we get with the ptp8 and presumably or most of deck Get this out the way here. first of all we've got these which are the maintenance uh, manuals one two three and one just for the lab 80 with its extra peripherals and these give a blow by blow low level circuitry at block diagram level We've got principles of operation it's also got timing diagrams. Check one here a minute ago. It disappeared on me, but it's got basically more circuit diagrams. And got basically everything all, all on the on the operation. And together with this, which is the uh, engineering drawings, full circuit. Oh full circuit diagrams or schematics whichever you prefer to call them you could build yourself an 8 the internals are basically standard TTL obviously memory is different uh, it's fairly specific but generally speaking there's no very, or very 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 few dedicated components they're all readily or were readily available in the 70s and I suspect some place some countries possibly even did do that it's based on the documentation provided by uh, DEC. We've also got software. Now this is main DEC's, main is its programs. These are diagnostics for all aspects of the PC. That's the that's the actual software itself. On its the preferred method of distribution was punch tape in those days. Okay, you had DEC tapes and you had some cassettes as well, but the main one was was punch tape. And this is uh, software listings and operation of all the. Uh, test programs. We are going to be using uh, let's test that's the one there 
predictive test. Remember, it's checkerboard test. Okay, now before putting the new memory in, I want to give the egg a run and run the memory diagnostics to make sure everything is okay, the diagnostics program is working, and particularly the two other cards involved in this memory uh, um, with the, the core plane. It's got two other cards, interface cards with it, control cards, uh, that's, uh, that's all okay. Right, so I've got the. I have the diagnostics in field two. Now I should say here that the uh, PDP-8, although you've got, only got 12 actual address lines because it's a 12-bit processor, there are three extended uh, address uh, lines which allow the ability to address up to 32K of core of memory uh, in 4K uh, pieces, which are, they call them fields. And I'm in. Um, I've got the memory. I've got the memory test program in field two. Starting address is 200, which is pretty well the standard for uh, yeah, most PDP-8 programs. Let's move the camera around so we can see the console, because of course this is a serial machine. And it outputs to a, uh, a serial console. This is a this is a console simulator, tele type simulator, as it were. Let's start this. Continue. Right, that's uh, switch register settings. It's asking me where, I, what field I want to start the test and end the test. I'm going to start on field zero. I'm going to end on field one. Continue. Now it says there's three fields, that's it running the test. So that's all good. We can see it on the front panel lights. So that's just a quick test, Makes basically he says the rest of the uh, system is running, the um, diagnostics program, the memory checkable program is running. And we can now go on to putting the new, taking the existing that existing uh, 8K card out and putting the new one in. Right, open up. It's a bus structured machine, a PDP at the E. I don't think any of the earlier ones were bus structured. They call it anomaly bus. And that's because it's along the bottom, but if you need to swap signals between card sets, for instance this memory has a set of three cards, one on the core plane and another one. One of these is the address drivers and the other one is the uh, um, handles the data, read and write. You have these little jumpers that you put across the top, seems to work quite well. This is the existing card, take that off, put it over here. Place the new one in its place. That's quite a lot of cars in this machine. Because it's a lab AE and there's a lot of extra peripherals. An eight without all the peripherals would be a, a sparser machine. We're ready to run that test again and see how we go. I'm going to do the same as we did before. Power on. Set extended address. Get that right, yes. Set the starting address. Now on the screen at the moment, we still have the old, from last time, so I'll clear that. And we'll start. There's the set switch register. Start at field 0, go to field 1. 
Continue. Whoopee! That looks very encouraging. Now in practice of course we'll leave that running for a bit to give it a soap test under elevated temperatures. The core memories are sensitive to temperature. These ones have a little thermistor doing that adjusts the drive current uh, um, for temperature changes. I understand some of the early ones actually ran at elevated temperatures since it's easier to control, keep it constant if you warm it up first. Here's the 8 itself. Now that noise is coming from an AM radio here. It's just picking up hash from the uh, computer. And I find this quite handy when I'm running diagnostics uh, and in the loop in it like that because you get used to what the sound is and you can go and do other things and it's immediately obvious if you've had, had an error halt or another halt or a program's crash. So it's uh, quite a good way, it's quite handy that way. In fact, I believe early computers actually had a loudspeaker tied to one of the data lines, so the operators got a pretty good idea of where a program was running and if it uh, went awry at all, which they often did in the early days. I've also sorted out, started to sort out some cards. This is the cards we will need to do a complete core stack. Oh, okay. Now this is the XY card that's responsible for creating the current pulses which uh, are, go into the core, core stack uh, and uh, through all the cores. And that's used when both obviously reading and writing the core. This is the sense inhibit board which has the job of sensing the small voltages generated by these cores when they flip on the read and also generating an inhibit pulse uh, which is used when writing a zero uh, on the right. I say the actual operation of this is a little bit more involved. I don't think there's time on this video. If you if you want one of those, if you want a, a bit more blow by blow, uh, I, I can do it. Just leave it in the comments. Well, I hope you found that interesting and slightly entertaining. Thank you for watching.